Hey guys, Jill Karen from Two Dogs Media. I wrote a tutorial on how to create a custom Gutenberg blocks and I just wanted to do a quick video to walk you through that tutorial so you have a visual as well as a written explanation. So why would you want to do a custom Gutenberg block? Well, because there are a million different Gutenberg plugins out there. They all have a million different types of blocks in them. You might download five different plugins to get the five different blocks that you want, which means a lot more resources on your server, a lot more code, just a lot of issues with um, compatibility. So we're trying to encourage people to really think outside the box, think about what you may need and create these different types of blocks on your own that are just very easy to make, very easy to manage. So what we're gonna do today, we actually created a post where we gave you every ounce of code you need and a step-by-step -step tutorial to create what we're showing you right now. So this is a sample site that we just built out so we can play around and have some fun. Um, we're gonna be using this going forward. It's called fun .two Dogs Design. It'll be where we house a lot of our um, tutorial samples. So for this page, we're calling it our resource page. This is a site, um, this is actually a page that we have live on a site. Uh, we love this page. It's just really easy and formatted nicely. Um, we have horizontal resource blocks at the top. This is a custom block that includes a logo, a title, a description, a button link, and a button link text field. So there's five fields making up this one block. Okay, and you can see we have a few different blocks. We can add as many as we want. That same block is also formatted as a column. So using the exact same block, we just have it laid out differently. Just two lines of CSS and one small change in the editor makes this happen. You can have three across, you can have two across. And the beautiful thing is these are all mobile friendly. Um, so you can see they all resize down properly. So the horizontal will now be vertical on mobile. So everything is all taken care of for you. Okay. So to use this, you do need a plugin um, called Lazy Blocks. Okay, that is the only plugin we're using right now and we're gonna show you exactly what you need to do for lazy blocks. Lazy blocks will allow you to create custom blocks that are kind of out of this world. Um, we're only gonna do a basic block today. I will do more tutorials going forward and do them step by step so you guys can create some really cool stuff in the future. So right now, um, if we go to lazy blocks, I'm gonna do an add new real quick. I just wanna show you how to add a new block, but then we're gonna to go to the block I already built. So when you click on add new, you'll get a screen that looks like this. If you do not see this screen, it's because you do not have the block editor in functionality installed. So if you have, for example, classic editor plugin installed where you have removed the Gutenberg functionality, you need to remove that because lazy blocks will only work with Gutenberg. So once you see this, you have your Gutenberg going, the, you'll have two tabs here, block and control. Control is basically the fields that you're putting into your block, your block, it's just really you're naming it. So I'm gonna do this one as my resource block. Okay, and then when you click on slug, it'll just fill it in with whatever the title is. Icon is optional, you don't have to, but if you want to, you can. Common blocks, I'm right now I'm recommending leaving it at common blocks. Uh, we'll do a tutorial in the future showing you an option for this. Um, and then everything else you could just leave empty. Go over to control. Okay, when you add control, that's like adding a field. Okay, so add control, okay, and you can see all this popped up, okay. This is super easy. So now you know the first field I had was a logo. So I might do resource logo is what I'm gonna name it. Okay, and if I click on name, it'll automatically populate it. And then this one I'm gonna choose image, okay, because I wanna be able to upload an image. That's all I really need, just label and the type. Add control, resource title, I'm gonna click on name, it'll automatically fill it in. And I want this one to be a text box. For types for now, guys, I would keep it easy. I would do text, text area, URL, or image. I wouldn't get anything fancy because you do have to know a little bit of HTML. So stick to those basic fields for now. Hopefully I'll have time to do more um, tutorials in the future. But for now, I'm really recommending just keep it easy. So that's all you have to do. And then you click publish. Once that's done, then you actually have to tell. So what this does is it creates the block for you where you can enter the content on the page, but it doesn't show it on the front end. And that's what this front end HTML is, okay? So you will have to have these fields placed down here so that the 
WordPress knows to display it on the front end. So that's all we're going to cover right here. What I'm going to do is take you back to the block that I already built, which is this one. Okay, This is the block that's showing on this page right now. Okay, You can see I have a resource logo. If I click on this, then the side opens up. If I click on resource title, you'll see everything here. So you can see I did resource title as a text block. I did resource description as a text area. I did all this step by step in the tutorial so you guys can follow right along. So once my fields were all set up, then I added this code on the bottom. This is HTML, and this right here is called a handlebar. This is for lazy blocks. This is what they use to decipher what the text is from a field. So for example, we have resource underscore title is where you're gonna enter the title of your resource. I'm gonna put that into these handlebars and then it's gonna display on the front end, okay? I won't get too much into this. All you have to do is copy and paste this into your front end HTML on your lazy block and you're good to go. Once your fields are done and your front end HTML is done, then you can go ahead and start putting that on your page. But the last piece of the puzzle will be adding some styling. This will bring the content to the front end, but you still need CSS to style it. So we gave you the CSS in our tutorial, okay, and we actually added it at the bottom of our style sheet, okay, resource block tutorial sample. So this is all the code you're gonna copy and paste into your CSS, whether it's in your style sheet or in your theme editor, if you have a CSS area, whatever it is, you're gonna copy and paste this in there, and then your page will look like this. Okay, so let's jump to the page real quick. This is my resource page. Okay. And you can see horizontal blocks. I can add a block. I can type in resource, add in my resource block, media library, pick a logo, resource title, pick a logo. This is my description. Um, HTTPS URL.com and learn more. Okay, now if I preview this, I've got my gravity at the top. Okay, what's cool is you can move these around. I can move this down. Now it'll show gravity, third one down. You can add another block here. If you click on this, you wanna, before gravity forms, you can add a header if you wanna break things up. Um, testing category. So if I wanted to break these out into a different category, I can do that. Okay, so now I have a new category. And then for the bottom, to create the columns is just a tiny bit different. So I have three columns here, and I have two columns here. To add columns, okay, I'm gonna show you how to add a new one. Okay, I'm gonna hit return so I can pull up a new area. I'm gonna click add block. I'm gonna choose a column block. Okay, now by default it usually gives you two. And this is the one little funky thing about Gutenberg. Sometimes it's a little tricky, but you can come over, if you just click over here a little bit, you'll see it kind of highlighted the whole column area, and now you'll see you have options. So say if you wanted to add in three, you can add three columns. And then here I can click add a block. I can add a resource block, media library, select. Do the same thing here, add resource block. That wasn't the right one. Resource block, media library, gravity forms. Okay. And then even if you wanted to do, do something else, say you wanted to do um, a paragraph here. Okay, now update. Now if I go to preview, see I've got my three blocks. Ah, and that's what I forgot to show you. So what you need to do when you add a column block, okay, so we have all of our columns, we chose three columns, when you click advanced, okay, we need to add a styling to showcase resource row, 
resource row, and then update. Okay, that's how you get it to show vertically. So you're always going to put resource row. And again, I know it's a little tricky. This is a Gutenberg glitch, not a me glitch. Um, but you have to just be careful where you're, like if I click here, I'm only choosing this block. If I click here, I'm choosing this block. If I click here, it's giving me the whole column. If I click right here, it's giving me three. So you just have to use a little careful. If you hover around, you'll see where it says columns on the top. Then you can click, you'll get the whole column box. Make sure you add the CSS on that column block and then click update. And if you click preview, now you can see those three boxes are going to be good. Okay, I didn't put any text in there, that's why it's not there. So that's all there is to this. So when you want to add new, you can actually get rid of this. Okay, remove block. You can actually change. If you decide you want to do two columns instead, you can make this two columns. Okay, so now it's two columns. Okay, so there's a lot of flexibility, guys, with what you can do. And when it comes to the styling, if you do have a little bit of um, CSS experience, you can change some of these items. So you can make background colors different. Um, you can get rid of the border if you don't want the border around the box. You can get the um, button to be a different color. Uh, we have it set to orange. Uh, obviously, you're going to want it to match, so you're just going to change whatever that background um, numbering is for the value that you want for the color. And that's it. So again, it's lazy blocks. You want to download that. You're going to copy the code that we gave you. You're going to copy exactly what we told you to enter for the resource block. Copy our CSS. And if you want it to be vertical, you just need to make sure that you're adding in that CSS um, designator to make it vertical. And outside of that, you'll have a fantastic looking page that you can have a lot of fun with. So any questions, let me know. And thanks and have a great day, guys.